Idee. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, so let me try again. So, so which starts which point I should start? So so I'm so the first of all, so so I'm working on the mainly the theoretical side of relativity and in the context of the gravitational wave, I'm working on the modeling of the binary system using some analytical method. And the goal of this talk is to very fully overviewing to how the current method to using the modeling of the binary black hole or a binary neutron star using particularly focusing on the analytical method. So, so putting the input in the one slide, so my mission of the talk is to what I exactly said. So overviewing the main idea of the theoretical tool to solving the two body problem in general relativity. And particularly focusing on converting that to the main idea to the community of the data analysis. For this part, so for uh, to for this purpose, so the I'm sorry, so most of the my talk is a little bit sketchy, so I do not go into the detail of the theoretical really theoretical side of the mathematical issue. So if you are expert on this field, sorry for that. And also, so I'm the originally come from the relativity, the relativity community, so I will frequently using that the unit D equals C equal one. So if the dimension looks something wrong, so don't worry. So I'm just using that to the, this specific unit. Okay. So the role of the relativity in the context of the gravitational wave is to how to solving that the space time is a binary. So so this is a maybe so this is a slide for the graduate student. So this is a gravitational wave observed by LIGO. But uh, the we don't know what this it means. So and if we wish to interpret into this, so we need to modeling this waveform using the general relativity, and we need to know how this what uh, this waveform means. What is the mass of the black hole? The black hole, or what is the spin of the black hole? And the what is the separation distance? Blah blah blah. All is only known to solving that to the some the exact to probe the two body problem in the general relativity and compare it to the observed the wave. So this is a context of the, the general relativity in the gravitational wave community. And particularly just focusing on the, the, the binary problem, so we can somehow writing up the, some schematic picture to classify that what is the problem we are looking for. So he, this, this cartoon basically classifying that to the binary system in the general relativity and how we approaching to solving the, this binary system in GR. So the horizontal line is the mass ratio of the binary, and the, the vertical line is the separation of the two binary. So what this means is that the separation is here zero to infinity. This means that the, the binary is gradually, gradually spiraling and merging, and the separation, the infinity means that the two is quite separated. And the mass ratio here means that the one is to we are working on that the, the some black hole, black hole, or binary. I mean that the mass of the binary is equal. But the, if the mass ratio is becoming large to the infinity, this means that the, the binary becoming that roughly is uh, some small mass or a point particle or test mass, orbiting around the, some big black hole, some some background, some space time created by the big black black, black hole. And if we are focusing on the, this region, the mass ratio is uh, almost uh, equal, and the separation is almost zero. This means that uh, the black hole is almost merging. At this stage, so everything we need to solving everything in using the some exact theories of general relativity. And in, at this moment, so we have to use some numerical numeric numerics to solve the Einstein equation. So this region is called the numerical relativity. So the, my talk is not focusing on not focusing on here, but the rather focusing on the, this region and this region. Because, for example, if the separation is a large, so we have some the parameter to approximate the system. And also, if the mass ratio is a large, also we have some the small parameter to approximate to the, the, the problem or the theory. So in my talk, so we are roughly focusing on that to the binary who has a large separation here, and also focusing on that to the binary with the mass ratio is quite infinity. And we introduce the main idea to describe the approximation method to describe such system. 
here post Newtonian theory and the perturbation theory here respectively. And one thing, so before going to the details, so one thing I comment. So in practice for the data analysis, so the we are not using that to the we are using the some phenomenal model combining that to the result of obtaining the each the result from each region of the binary parameter space, numerical relativity and the some approximate method, so called post Newtonian theory here and the perturbation theory here. And using that to the combining the result to each region to each the result from each region, we're developing some phenomenal model, so called the effective one body or phenomenal model to describe the equational way for all regions of the parameter space. But we had, I don't talk about them this talk. But the, if you are interested in so ask me, I will sketch in the what it means and the basic idea of the, these two models in the end of the, this talk. Okay, so the next 10 slides, so I firstly describing that to the one with the approximation method in the general relativity, so called the post-Newtonian approximation. It is which can be used to is where the binary is very separated and the motion is quite small. So the velocity of the motion is quite small. So let me explain more precisely. So suppose that you have the two binary, have the separation, it's quite large. And the, the motion, the velocity of the motion of the each each black hole is quite small. So this this region, so we can using that to the to the, to the general analysis correction. In addition, to, uh, we treat it. Uh, to we can treat the general analysis correction as uh, some correction on top of the Newtonian theory. So put it in, in other way. So the theory is a post-Newtonian theory, is a proxy method where the gravity is quite weak, such as the right separation of the binary, and the motion of the binary is quite slow. So in this case, so this system has uh, some small parameter, because uh, to the gravitational field is quite small, because of the right separation, we assume that to the roughly the typical strength of the gravitational field of the system is smaller than one. And also, we assume that the separation is quite large, and this is uh, the for come from the BDR theorem. So the world motion is also quite slow. So we also assume that the relative velocity of the two body is also smaller than one. And we are expanding that to the Einstein field equation and the equation of motion using this small parameter. And in this talk, we say that to the correction at to the order, v, order n of the V over C, to the some Newtonian exp expression, like a Newtonian potential or the Newtonian kinetic energy to be the n over two points to Newtonian order. So the mission of the, this theory is solving the Einstein field equation and the equation of the motion of the two body using the, to the, this slow motion parameter and weak field parameter and uh, expanding to the, this system and solve it iteratively. So this is the basic idea of the post Newtonian theory. Am I clear so far? Okay. So let me so the, so the briefly to introducing that what are we actually doing? So as I said, the po Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. So firstly, let's focus on how to solve the Einstein equation. So the post Newtonian theory, we assuming that the gravity is quite weak. So gravity weak mean in the general relativity is that space time is almost flat. So let's define that to some of the, the correct general relativity correction of the gravity potential as H, defined by the some space uh, Minkowski metric minus this is the exact space time. So this means that the HA mu is the sum of the perturbation on top of the Minkowski space time. And let's also imposing that the gauge condition, so called the harmonic gauge condition defined here. And using the, this metric potential or perturbation to the Minkowski space time and the harmonic, con harmonic gauge condition, firstly, we translated the, the exact Einstein field equation in the following form. 
So this left hand side is box HMU is a web operator web web operator acting on the metric potential here. And right hand side is composed by the T alpha beta, the stress energy momentum tensor, which is the binary in our case. And some tensor around the alpha beta all describing the nonlinearity of the general relativity. So this is just rewriting the Einstein field equation, exactly Einstein field equation in terms of the H, and we do not approximate anything at this point. Yes. Uh -huh. Physical interpretation of the harmonic gauge. No, 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 no. But I have never thought about much. Yes. Right. It's may we wish to make it to something that the equation like a wave proper like a wave equation in the flat space time. Is, is that answer your question? So, not quite. No, okay, so let me probably sort of explain this way. So if I just plug into this and the this exact Einstein equation and write, try to write it down to the, the right to the Einstein, exact Einstein equation in terms of H, so the left hand side cannot be that uh, the, uh, written by the first space time wave operator. So we need to so write, so we really wish to write uh, Einstein equation, something like, something like a wave operator wave equation in the flat space time. And the harmonic equation condition is the, uh, one of the convenient ways to achieving this goal. <laughs> Maybe I'm not convinced you. So, mm -hmm. you know, some some <laughs> geometrical meaning or something. Can you comment on the? Right. Yes. As a source. Right, right, right. So we don't. Yes. Yes. So the approximation starts in the next slide. So recalling that, so the here come into the some the post one kind of the post approximation. Recalling that, so the with assuming that the perturbation from the flat space system is quite small and weak. So in our cases, this perturbation h alpha beta can be treated small and small parameter because because so this is a weak so called a weak field approximation. So we use this as a small parameter and the perturbative solving that to, to the previous exact Einstein equation, order by order. So in our cases, as the post-Newtonian, post-Newtonian saying, saying the zero order solution is just a Minkowski spacetime, some dynamics in the Newtonian without any gravitational wave. So then to the starting of this iteration and plugging to the, the Einstein the former equation, assuming that the nth order solution is given, this can, so the, nth, the nth order solution can form in that the stress energy tensor, former stress energy tensor, and the next order, iterate next order, n plus one solution is iteratively given by the solution of this equation. So that is, so assuming that the and n order solution is given by here, and this forming that the, um, the energy momentum is here, the next order solution is just solving that the wave equation for the HN plus alpha beta. And this, repeating this procedure, so at the, at the end of the day, so we get, what we get is to the sequence of the gravitational potential, 
H0, H plus 1, H plus 2, H plus 3, blah, 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 blah. And summing up, so this forming that uh, the perturbable expansion of the gravitational uh, gravity potential in terms of the small potential here. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, so we, so so what what precisely saying here is us so this is thank you for good question. So at this procedure, so we do not need to necessarily imposing the to the gate condition or equation of the motion when we are solving the equation the, the field equation. After field equation is solved, we can impose that to the gauge condition, which actually equivalent to the equation of the motion, taking care of the any radiation reaction or conservative, conservative effect, blah, 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 blah. So the point is that to the solving the field equation, we don't need to impose that to the equation of the motion, solution of the equation of the motion. Am I correct? Okay. Thank you. So related to this question, so once we're solving this, so we're getting the sequence of the, the, the weak field potential, and after that, we're imposing that to the gauge condition or a conservation law to T alpha beta, and solving the, this conservation law, we're getting that to the equation of the motion of the matter field. Right? In our cases, it's the equation of the motion for the binary. Maybe so this slide is a little bit tricky, but to the technically, but to the let me roughly asking what we are actually doing a little bit more detail about the postulant expansion. As the field equation is uh, given by the solution of the wave operator in the flat space time, so we are easily writing down to the solution, we have a resulted solution of the, this field, the wave equation. So T alpha beta is, is a large momentum tensor. And the, that's it. So what we need to do is just evaluating this integral. But this integral is quite tricky. So let me just highlight uh, some the feature of this integral. The first is that the source T alpha beta is not localized. So recall that T alpha beta is to composed by the T alpha beta. It's uh, some, bi in our cases, it's binary. And the some nonlinear term, some nonlinear term coming from the H. So to obtaining the to the, the H alpha beta or a field point here, we firstly need to evaluating this integral over the past right cone, which we denote in the funny E here. And this right cone involving that the some the matter field T alpha beta only bounded to the some sp the specially localized region, but the, this part, nonlinearity, is spread over the all past right cone. So practically, we, if we wish to integrate with this, so we need to carefully decomposing that to the integral domain. So the so-called the near zone, where the only t the matter T alpha beta or the binary binary sitting down, and also the wave zone, which describing that to the stress energy momentum tensor comp the computed by the field itself. And we divide it by the, this region, that is where the matter is localized, and the, the region where the source is composed by the gravitational wave, it's the gravitational field itself, in putting that to the some world tube, world tube, so called D, with the radius which has a typical wavelength of the rod, R. So, to computing this X, so we need to computing that the integration, the cont contribution of the integration coming here, and, and also contribution coming from the W here. Okay, so let me one thing, so that the, what do we mean by the, so in the, con in the context of this, what we mean by the post-Newtonian expansion? So suppose that 
this integral is the source term of the this integral is only coming from this world tube or some binary here. And we also wish to evaluate the to the gravitational wave, gravitational field also located in here, so called near zone or near the binary. So in this case, is, so looking at the this the structure of the TR puppet of the stress energy momentum tensor. So in this case, is the field and the source, the distance of the field and the source is quite small. So we can expand it to the distress momentum tensor in terms of the, the distance, field point, and the source point, x and x, mi x minus x prime. This is just a Taylor expansion of this quantity. And this generated the power series in with the coefficient 1 over c. So if we're expanding to this in terms of 1 over c, 1 over c square, blah, 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 so we are getting that some sequence of the, ex the, the theta expansion of the stress energy momentum tensor in powers of 1 over c, and this is the so-called the the post-Newton expansion of the gravitational field, gravitational, this and the end result of this provides that to the post-Newton expansion of the, this HR puppet, the gravitational field. So maybe am I clear or so maybe I'm give us describe something bad way. Okay, so the one last thing to add it to the comment on this the integral is that how we can extract in the gravitational wave from this integral. So in this case is so we ex so evaluating that to the field point X outside of the near zone here so and evaluate it in the wave zone in this case is the difference x minus x prime is almost negligible and also we can expand it to the this the alpha beta as a form of the some sort of multiple expansion type the march multiple expansion form so and if i taking that to the after this expansion and if i taking that to the to the x to the almost infinity this gives me the, to the some potential in the limit of the large R. And this, at evaluating at this in the large distance, the evaluate the gravitational potential at this large distance gives us the gravitational wave. So here is the reading order, and the next lead is the order four, and blah, blah, blah. We can get into the, the much more expansion of the gravitational field. Am I clear so far? Maybe. Okay, so sorry. So, so this is the most technical part of this talk, and I don't want to uh, get into the details. So if you are interested in what I'm saying or evaluating the disintegral more explicitly, you can, for example, you can go to the, to the textbook, the gravity by the first and where. And this, uh, the one thing I wish to note is that this is a one way to describing that the post-Newtonian, post-Minkowski, post-Newtonian theory. And there is any other way to also describe the, the post-Newtonian theory in the slightly, using the slightly different languages. No, 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 any. This is just a uh, language, nor mathematical tool, or mathematical language. Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. So, so, the, so, so, in the rest of the, so the few slides, I, you d assuming that we sum that to the equations of the post-Newton expansion of the gravitational field, so 
I discussing the two G how this can be used to solving the two G final problem in more practice. Suppose that the we have the gravitational, so suppose that we're solving that the Einstein equation order by order and we got in some sequence so in the power of the one over C or the one over GM over R, I mean that weak field expansion, and let more to make me precise, let's focusing on that that the binary system composed of either two point particle with no spin and the separation is the R12 and the each point part each, each small body or point particle has the velocity V1 and V2. And after solving the two G post-Newtonian post equation, the field equation, and the result for the equation of motion of the two binary is composed by the same Newtonian term here and the post-Newtonian correction that describes the relativistic correction here that describes that to the relativistic correction to the gravitational wave potential and also the equation of the motion in the general relativity has the some damping or radiation reaction force which describing that to the energy loss of the due to the gravitational wave emission to the infinity. So the equation of the motion in the post-Newtonian theory is to the some correction to the Newtonian potential plus some damping term that taking account for the energy loss of the system. So this is not quite straightforward to solve. The point here is that the here the damping term is only has the odd power of the post-Newtonian counting order C to five and C to seven. This is because that to the C is connected to the T, and this is the describing the time time and symmetric part of the force, which means that to the this cannot be conservative, but it must be the time because of time and symmetry, this might this must be describing some of the dissipation of the system. So in principle, we know that to the this equation up to the certain post Newtonian order, solving this and putting it into the Einstein field equation, then we get in the exaggerational wave. But this is not what we are doing in practice. So to shortcut, so what we are doing in practice is something like that. Suppose that we are talking, focusing on the sac particular circular orbit motion and forgetting about that to the radiation reaction term in the equation of the motion, but only focusing on the conservative term. From that equation of the motion, we can define that to the binding energy here. Binding energy is something schematically written as this form. Newtonian term plus post-Newtonian correction. And here, omega means that to the frequency of the circular orbit. And instead, the directly computing that to the radiation reaction term of the equation of motion, we instead computing that to the energy loss of the flux that emitted from the system. So this is written by the quadratic formula for at the lowest order plus some post-Newtonian correction up to some 3.5 pn. And on the physical argument, this binding energy, the time change, change rate of the, this binding energy should be connected to the energy loss due to the gravitational wave flux. So we should have this so-called balance equation. E dot should be equal to the, the minus of the flux. Using this, plugging to this and this, we getting that to the evolution, time ev the equation for the time evolution of the circular orbit frequency. And integrating this with respect to the omega, and we getting that to the gravitational wave phase as an integration of the this differential equation. So this is the, the standard trick to getting that to the gravitational wave, gravitational phase of the gravitational wave in the post-Newtonian theory. Am I clear so far? Okay. Okay, I don't get into the any further detail in this talk, but to the just let's just summarize that what we can do in the post-Newtonian theory. So here, this column is showing that the sub, so what we can compute to the using the post-Newtonian theory for and the what high what how higher order we can compute using the post-Newtonian theory. For example, the conservative dynamics here means that this is basically the binding energy. And if the binding the binding energy can be computed up to the 4 pn if the binary doesn't have the spin. And if it has a spin q, spin orbit, or one of them has a spin, or two, both of them have the spin, it can be computed 3.5 pn. 
and also higher spin interaction term is also computed through PN. And this is the same for the energy flux and the, energy, the radiation reaction force in the equation of the motion. And also we can compute how, 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 how high we can compute the waveform phase and the waveform amplitude and so on. I'm sorry? Oh, yes, right, 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 sorry. Yeah, I, don't, I don't update. Right. Thank you. And here I just don't talk, I don't mention in my talk, but the tidal means that we are usually modeling that the, the binary in the photo Newtonian theory is just a point of particle, but it's quite not true in the reality because it's a small body of black hole and neutron star, and it should be deformed by the external tidal field, tidal field or external perturbation. The, but the, this such kind of effect doesn't enter in that beyond the 5 pn. But the, if we can compute that to the deformation of the each small body or a finite size effect of the small body also up to this certain order 7 pn or 6 pn and blah blah. So this is just a sketch that the how post Newtonian, the post Newtonian theory works. Comparing that to the post Newtonian, the wave gravitational wave form projected by post Newtonian. Sorry, let me try again. So, this protein showing that combining that to the what we have in the post Newtonian theory, we're developing that to the gravitational wave, and we're comparing this wave form to the exact numerical relativity result. And probably, we you can show in that this figure. Blue line is a result of the numerical relativity with the same parameter, and green is a prediction for the numerical the post Newtonian theory. And we don't see almost any deviation here. So this means that the post Newtonian theory or approximation it works quite well. So this is a non spin and equivalent mass cases, and retrieved by the a little bit older paper, but we can do the, play the same game for the binary with spin and more generic configuration of the binary space time where the result from the numerical reality estimation is available. So maybe so I'm not I'm not to provide the good information for the theory, but the my question for the this community or this data analysis is that so the so far we can compute the almost many stuff or many quantities at some certain order of the post Newtonian order. But the I'm so as a theoretist, theoretist uh, I'm unsure so which direction we should go next. There is a many way to computing that or general generalizing the power of the post Newtonian theory. For example, currently we can compute the binding energy for PN for spinless circular orbital cases. Do we need to go to the five, six, seven, eight, or any desired higher order? And also, we know that to the some spin coupling term in the equation of the motion and the flux. And currently, we can compute it up to certain order 3.5 pn, including the spin linear, spin squared, and spin cubic. But do we need to tie more? We need more spin interaction terms. And also, so in this, usually post Newtonian assuming that to the point of particle, so for example, if the one with the black the point of particle or small body is a black hole, there should be existing that the energy flux absorbs by black hole. Though another question is that so do we need such kinds of information? And also do we need to the compute the more higher order the, the the finite effect finite size effect if the point of particle is no longer modeled by sorry, the small body is no longer point modeled by the point of particle, but it's a some small body and also deformed by the external field. So, if you're interested in so let me answer or your opinion with this question. I'm just wondering so what can we do, ne can I do next? So not, not now, of course. Okay, so can I move to the next section? Okay. Okay, so I'll skip this. Sorry.
Okay, so I'm this. So in the rest of the rest of the my talk, I'm switching my gear to talking about another approximation method to modeling the binary, so called the gravitational wave, gravitational self force theory, which I remind you where we can use this to describe the Higgs binary system. Unlike the post-Newtonian theory, here the gravitational wave theory or black hole pattern theory is model use mo assuming that the mass the is suitable where the mass ratio of the binary is quite large, basically here. And this theory can be applied for the any binary with any separation until it merging together. So in the rest in the rest of the ten slide, I'm talking about how we can modeling that this binary using that uh, how we can use how can we can approach analytically modeling this theory and what is the language we use to describe such system. Yes. It's quite schematic. Of course, of course, of course. So this is a basically the distribution. Yes, it totally depends on which quantity you are focusing on. Well, of course, of course. In, in, in of course, in principle, unless it's the merging the each other, so in principle, including that with any infinite number of the higher order, the both theory should be. Yes, no, yes. Right. Yes, this is always the issue to plotting this type of the <laughs> figure. Am I answer your question? Okay, so to be honest, so I'm, I'm sure so this is uh, so describing that this theory is appropriate to discuss here because I heard that this workshop is aimed for the LIGO. So particularly the Lisa. Okay, sorry. So I <laughs> didn't see that the abstract more detail. So in this case, this part is also fine in this workshop. Okay, so the the this the tool which I wish to describe in the using the self-force theory or the binary is the, the binary system with a large mass ratio. And in astrophysically speaking, so the target is the the binary system, some compact object orbiting around the supermassive black hole in the center of the galaxy. But unfortunately, of course, uh, this, bi this binary is quite promising the gravitational wave source and uh, em do emit a gravitational wave, but uh, the band is to the more lower frequency because uh, to the typical frequency of the gravitational wave is to basically the inverse of the mass. So this is the Lisa band. But the merit of the this, is, is this system is that this, the, this system, in spiral phase of the, this system is very slow because in spiral phase continues at the mass ratio, basically the inverse of the mass ratio. So it continues all the months or year. So it's accumulating, of course the signal is quite small, but it's accumulated, accumulated over over again. So we're getting, this means that the, we have the, some very precise probe around the, some black hole space time. And this gravitational wave from this system is expected to provide that to the ideal environment testing that to the general relativity or the investigating that to the space the geometry, particular like a black hole system, black, black hole or any other exoplanet system. So this is the main motivation to study the, the binary. And it's put I putting that to the, this system in the relativity the language of the, in the relativity, we can forming the problem something like that. Suppose that we have the some the car black hole. We assume that to the large black hole is car with spin. And the assuming that to the this the small companion is something like the point of particle. So the gravitational self cell source theory is describing the binary system such that this big black hole, car, car black hole spacetime, 
created the sum couple space time, and the small object like a particle roughly is moving that to this space time, gradually deviating from the geodesics. And we describing that this small deviation using the small parameter of the mass ratio. In this case, is that this inverse small mass of the small over the mass of the large mass of the large black hole. And we expanding that the equation of the motion and the Hilde equation in terms of the, this small parameter. And in the rest of the, 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 this talk, we say that n's order means that the something expanding to by the quantity gravitational field or uh, the velocity in terms of, of this small parameter. And the deviation is now characterized by the, the some quantity computed in the car background space time or car space time. And so let me be more precise. So in this language, the background or the zeroth order, mo the zeroth order is a point particle motion in car space time. And in this case is the motion, the zeroth order is just a point particle geodesic motion in car space time. So here is just a schematic or the schematic picture of the motion of the geodesic in car. It looks quite complicated, but the point is that the motion of the geo car geodesic is just characterized by the three conserved quantity, en energy and energy and angular momentum, and so-called Carter constant is related to some inclination of the system. So once we specify that the energy and angular momentum and this specific constant motion, so-called the Carter constant, so we can characterize that any orbit, which looks complicated, but we can classify that this complicated the orbit just this three quantity. So this is a zeroth order or the starting point of our perturbation scheme in terms of the mass ratio. So what to do we next is to iterate or expand it solving the Einstein field equation. So in the so this is a the so called the, the to achieve this this the theory that achieved this is the so-called black hole perturbation theory. Why we call it the black hole perturbation theory is, be, is described below. So suppose that we expand it to the, to the exact metric around the background car space time and the small perturbation. And we if in the suppose that we imposing that to the some gauge condition, in this case it's Lorentz gauge condition, because that the, this becomes a covariant derivative. And again, just substituting the this to the exact Einstein field equation will give us the, some the wave equation type, transform the, the, the Einstein equation in the wave type equation. But the, unlike the post-Newtonian theory, here we are talk starting off the car space time, so we have here the curvature, curvature created by the background of car. And also, this wave operator is no longer defined by the flat space time, but is defined by in the car. And the right hand side, T alpha beta is the energy momentum tensor computing, created by the particle motion, plus delta G describing that to the all nonlinearity, taking care of the original Einstein equation. So, uh, the we wish to solving that uh, this equation expanding the in, in the power of the mass ratio, and thus so far we can solve it uh, at to the first order in the mass ratio. In the car space time cases, we can solve this equation only up to the first order the in the mass ratio using that uh, the slightly different equation, so called the two cost equation. And uh, this is uh, the perturbation for the Einstein field equation. And once the Einstein part the perturbation equation is created, we the perturbation of the particle is back react to the geodesic motion. That is, the, 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 the first order going beyond the geodesic motion is no longer the geodesic in the car space time. So more precisely, suppose that this left hand side is the geodesic equation, but the if we are in terms once one, one order higher to the geodesic motion. The some back reaction force appear here, and this back reaction force is created by the metric perturbation of the point particle itself. 
So this is the reason why we call that this forcing thumb is a self force because it's created by the point particle itself. So the next mission is to solving that this forced equation. And roughly, but the, this is quite complicated, unlike the post Newton case. The, the I sub one highlight, I wish to highlight one thing. If we I could wish to compute that to some field created by this perturbation, sourced by the, the particle motion, this is a first order, so the source can be the cardiothesics. So this field is affected by the path right cone of the field plus any backscattering effect generated, any gravitational wave emitted by the path of the world line. It's backscattered, because of the curvature of the black hole, it's backscattering back here and it's accumulated almost entire history. So while we, I can simplify that this equation, it's quite hard to solve in practice. And also I assuming that the car black hole and the motion of the point of particle and of the, this point of particle doesn't have the spin, but if the point of particle has a spin, the spin interaction of the car and the small particle also entering this order and also affect creating the additional correction term here. Am I clear? Okay, so one last thing to relating that to the, this equation of the motion to the, what is the, how this is the equation of the motion or self force equation to relate to the equation of wave is something like that. So like a post Newtonian cases, the gravitational self force has a two part that describing that to the correction to the gravitational wave, gravitational potential and some back reaction or radiation reaction. And in these cases, the gravitational self force cases, the radiation reaction term is uh, described, defined by the some self force created by the retarded field minus the advanced field. And the point is that the effect of the, this part of the self force is can be related to by the gravitational wave flux emitted by the infinity. And in these cases, we have the black hole, so we also need to take care of the gravitational wave loss through the black hole spacetime. So the dispatible part of the self force describing about the basically the change rate of the constant motion of the back and cardiothesics. And uh, looking at this, we can describing that the how the background constant of the motion of the car is evolved due to the back, the back reaction or gravitational addition. And we can describe the evolution of the point of particle and in spiral motion. But of course the story is uh, not that simple. Of course the self force is also have the conservative the term and this describes that the sun post also describes the sun post effect, effect of the motion, which roughly describing that the correction of the binding energy or the gravitational wave potential, also called describing the east coast shift, and also correct describe the, the correction to the orbital precession and also the tidal effect and more. So we also really need to computing that energy, both the energy loss of the gravitational wave and also the conservative part of the self force, we need both. So this is almost the last slide of my talk. So this is just what you taking up in my talk. And let me summarize that what we can do in the self force theory. So this programming that is describing that the background space time, short shard and the car, and this circular or generic means that to the how the background orbit is described. Generic means that to the eccentric orbit, and the equatorial means that to the eccentric orbit to equatorial, and the generic means that to the eccentric and inclined motion. And what we can do in the self force theory is something the following. To computing that the gravitational wave flux emitted by the orbit in the car space time short shard, we can do it for generic orbit. That is, we can compute the gravitational wave flux for any generic orbit in car with some technical caveat. We can do that. This describing basically the corresponds to the dispatch uh, part of the self force. But if we're looking at the conservative part of a full first order self forces, 
what we can do is to the circular orbit and the eccentric orbit is mod of roughly okay. And we can also compute it that to the self force in circular orbit and the equatorial orbit with the eccentricity 0 0.4 or 0 0.5 is fine, but we can't compute that to the self force for high eccentricity. And also the generic orbit with inclination is ongoing, but we still can't. And if we want order higher, so second order, because if we really wish to compute that to the gravitational wave from the inspiring Lyazy mass ratio binaries, we need the second solving that the second order field equation. Why? The first order the field equation is sourced by the car geodesics, and the geodesics doesn't plunge or inspire, never. So if we really wish to compute that to the gravitational wave, from the inspiring orbit, we really need to solving the second order solution of the field equation. And unfortunately, while we are working very hard, the second order, second order solution, both the force and the field equation for the circular orbit in the quasi circular orbit in the short child is ongoing. But we still need several years. And beyond that, we still don't know how to do it in practice. This slide, but the I just showing that the state of the art of the self force calculation thus far. So this for plot showing that the how the inspiral orbit evolving in the Schwarzschild space time under the first of the self force. And the 2500, 100, one means that the days before the plunge, and this system is to the mass ratio 10 to minus 5. So at least uh, we can compute the under the model technical assumption, we can compute that the in spiral motion with the first or self force in Schwarzschild, this is completed. And quite soon we expected that we can play the same game for the car. But once again, we still need to work hard how to compute in the gravitational wave generated by such a self force to in spiral. Of course, this is a Schwarzschild. Why? But this, this, but this is completely based on the the, the, uh, the, uh, the estimation using the post Newtonian flux. Uh, but, but wait, 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 but this, this is the equator, almost the equatorial case. This is an extreme mass ratio case. So it's a story is different. Go forward. No, no, no. Yeah, it, 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 it's a, it, there's a strong field effect to the GR, so the, with the, it takes. Okay.
So, so this is the last slide of my talk, and I just putting that to the this stuff and to motivate some discussion. So, as the state of the art, so what we can do in the next few years is the following task. Of course, we cannot generate into the, the gravitational wave for generic orbit around the car. This is a holy grail, and we should be able to in the 10 years. But to the near the term, what we can do is basically I can summarize three points. I can so we can compute in that to the self force correction of motion for generic orbit in car, but to the first order. And also, we sh should be able to compute in that to the waveform and also the second order correction to the motion. And also the waveform from the inspiring uh, orbit in the short space time, it should be ready to soon. Of course, this is uh, these two three is definitely beneficial for the modeling the extra the large mass ratio binary that targeted by the RISA, but the can we or how this quantity or this result can help that to the binary system to particularly in the LIGO band? Particularly, we are interested in that uh, this part, the second order. Of course, uh, the first order mass ratio must be very large. But uh, if I wish to include that the first order correction, the second order correction, maybe this can be helped to modeling that uh, the intermediate mass ratio or something. And I'm just wondering, is, uh, is that really help to the LIGO, to LIGO detection, or it still go beyond LIGO, and we still need to stick to the RISA? This is my personal question. Okay, so I should stop here. Thank you.